This picture and video were both posted onto Snapchat by a boy named Aiden Fuchi. The caption for the photo reads, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? This seems innocent without context, however there's a sinister meaning behind this message. Even one of Aiden's friends responded to the story saying, You know what happened to Tristan. Carefully looking at both pieces of media, they were taken inside a cop car after Aiden Fuchi was taken into custody after killing fellow classmate Tristan Bailey. At the time, Tristan Bailey was a 13-year-old middle schooler and cheerleader. She's been described as an energetic young girl who always stood up for her friends and that she was a powerful child that was able to give a lot to so many. As mentioned before, Aiden and Tristan were classmates, but reportedly they never talked to each other in their one and only class together. Aiden was still new at Patriot Oaks Academy, and making friends with others was pretty difficult for him. He would befriend another student named Trey, however. Trey described Aiden as someone who was chill at times, but clearly showed signs of behavioral issues, and it seemed that he didn't care about anything, which also affected him in his academic life. Aiden was known for being a pothead, and would also show up to school many times while high. As time went on through the year, Trey and Aiden would get closer and eventually interact with others. But there was one person in particular that Aiden still wanted to talk to even though he didn't know her personally. This person was Tristan Bailey. Aiden wanted to be friends with her, or at least that's what it seemed at first. On May 8th, 2021, Trey and Aiden were hanging out together at Trey's house during a Saturday evening. They both wanted to hang out with others and so Trey asked him if he would be alright if Tristan could hang out with them, to which Aiden said that he didn't care. After hanging out for a couple hours, Trey felt tired and told them to leave the house as he didn't want to be around them anymore. It was around 1am in the morning when they left, and they were planning on walking home together. The next morning on Mother's Day, one of Tristan's siblings went to her room to wake her up, only to discover that she wasn't there. Tristan's mother, Stacy Bailey, would immediately phone the police to report her missing daughter. Both Aiden and Trey were the prime suspects since they were the last two that were with her. Both were questioned on what happened the night before, and after talking with officers and investigators, they started to believe that Aiden was the boy behind it all. As described by Aiden, he originally stated that he left around 1 in the morning and walked her to a street. For the time being, he explained that he walked around for some time and arrived home at approximately 3.30am. This was already strange enough though since he made it clear that his parents hated him staying out late. And since Trey lived 30 minutes away from his house, it only made sense for him to leave his house earlier. When questioned later on that day by officers yet again, he had a different story. This time he insisted that both him and Tristan were going to walk home together, but he ended up ditching her after they supposedly got into a fight after Tristan inappropriately touched him. Due to anger, Aiden pushed her to the ground and left her there. At this point, no one was buying what he was saying and so the video surveillance cameras were looked into. The first piece of footage shows Tristan and Aiden walking outside together in the neighborhood, to which it was assumed that they were walking home together. Fast forward a couple hours later, and Aiden is seen by himself frantically running while holding a pair of shoes. Authorities then decided to go search around the area if they could find any details surrounding the case. Just later that day at around 6pm, a local resident was walking through a wooden area near Saddlestone Drive, south of Jacksonville, which was near Tristan's home. Upon reaching the area, he found the stabbed body of a girl, in which officers were able to identify the body to Tristan Bailey. It was reported by a medical examiner that she had been stabbed up to 114 times, with 49 of them being defensive wounds. The knife that was used in the attack was also identified as Aiden's DNA was found on it. The next day, officers went to the Fuchi's resident to look for more evidence. They ended up finding a sheath that matched with the knife and his clothing that had blood on it, which led to his arrest. Something that should also be noted was that Aiden's mother, Crystal Smith, was also arrested in this case because she was caught tampering with evidence as she was seen on camera trying to wash away the bloodstain on Aiden's clothing and tried to hide them. However, she would be released on a $25,000 bail. Aiden would be brought to court to defend himself. His mentality and reasoning behind the killing needed to be answered, and so some came forward. Aiden's girlfriend at the time, Sophie Bauman, explained that Aiden's behavior has been a disaster. He would often tell her that his home life was negatively affecting him and that his father was a big reasoning behind it. He explained that his father would never let him express his feelings in a healthy manner, 
and that he would often hit him, which led to his anger problems. On top of this, Sophie explained that Aiden would often hear voices in his head. There were even times where she felt threatened, as Aiden told her that she was planning on killing others and that she was one of them. She didn't take him seriously at first because of their dark sense of humor, but she then had second thoughts as he would often carry his knife around and pretend to stab her with it. It only got worse when he would walk around his nearby area and follow people in hopes of dragging them into the woods and stabbing them. He told this to Sophie and when asked whether he was joking or not, he explained that it wasn't one and that he was going to do it to someone in the next month, in which he ended up killing Tristan that same month. As all this evidence was garnered, Aiden was charged with first degree murder and served as an adult. However, this decision was made in 2021. Two years later in February 2023, Aiden Fucci pleaded guilty for his actions and just one month later, his sentence was changed to life in prison. As previously mentioned, Aiden's mother, Crystal, was released from bail, but she still faced more consequences after Aiden's sentence. In May 2023, Crystal Smith was sentenced to 30 days in jail and five years of probation which many believe to be quite generous since she was the one that tampered with evidence. Nohima Graber was a high school Spanish teacher at Fairfield High in Fairfield, Iowa. Nohima was fairly known around the school in the area for not just being an admirable teacher, but she was commonly seen driving her van after work to a nearby park named Chautauqua Park where she would take her daily walks. Something she enjoyed doing so often would somehow be used against her and eventually led to her own death. And no, she wouldn't be murdered by a stranger at the park. She would be killed by her two own students, both 16 at the time, Jeremy Goodell and Willard Millard, more commonly known as Chayden, would follow her one day after school on November 2nd, 2021, in which they planned to murder her. They waited for her to go down a lonely path at the park, and once they saw her there, they fatally beat her with a baseball bat. To try and hide her body, they stuffed her under a tarp, wheelbarrow, and railroad ties towards the north side of Chautauqua Park. After that, they drove her van off at the end of a nearby rural road and left it there in hopes that no one would notice. But only a couple hours later, the police would receive a phone call about a missing woman. Her husband, Paul Graber, immediately grew suspicion after he noticed that Nohema hadn't arrived home yet and that she was taking longer than usual. He even went to the park, but to his surprise, her van was nowhere to be seen. The next day, a student contacted the police after hearing about the disappearance of Nohima and they shared what they had seen on Snapchat. Jeremy Goodell posted these pictures onto his account, which only raised suspicion on his part. A search then began at the park and the officers were able to find Nohima's body. As the day went on, more and more evidence was being shared by other students. For example, one of them overheard Chayden talking about that Mrs. Graber was going to disappear one day. It was at this point that the two boys were the main suspects behind it all, and so search warrants were granted for their homes and phones. At Jeremy Goodell's house, the baseball bat that was used to kill her was found. On Chayden's phone, two notes were titled Prep and Procedure, which talked about the items that were needed and how he was going to carry out his plan. Now at this point, you're probably wondering what's the motive behind this all. Well, as previously mentioned, both of them were students of Mrs. Graber, and Chayden, in particular, wasn't the greatest in Spanish. He hated the class, and so he had poor marks. The last straw for him was when he got an F on his last test, and it negatively affected his GPA. This also meant that he wasn't able to attend a class trip to Spain, in which the students were given an opportunity to study abroad. Due to him feeling that he wasn't graded properly, he went out to seek for revenge. He asked Jeremy to help him in his evil plan, to which he agreed for some reason. When Chayden was questioned on why he killed her that day, he explained that he was just randomly walking around the park and noticed Mrs. Graber out of nowhere. Suddenly, just out of nowhere, a group of masked and aggressive teenagers told him that he needed to kill her and hide her body. And on top of this, let's just say that Jeremy wasn't the brightest as well. He knew that Chayden was planning on doing this and originally he opted out at first. But for some unknown reason, he decided that he was going to join in after. Ultimately, they both pled guilty for their actions and explained how sorry they were for committing such a crime, but this obviously wasn't going to end well for them. In the end, Chayden Miller was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term before parole of 35 years. Jeremy Goodell was also sentenced to life in prison, but has a possibility of parole in 25 years. 
why Chayden took the life of someone and ruined his life over a grade, and why Jeremy decided to tag along with him are questions we will never get a clear answer to. A young man and male teenagers were walking around in the early mornings near Pilling Street in the town of Lee. After originally planning on robbing any ongoer in a local area, they stumbled upon an innocent 33-year-old young father named Scott Anderton. However, instead of just robbing him, they wanted him dead instead. They previously met up with a friend named Logan Atherton to collect a bag full of weapons. Later that day around 4 in the morning, the three guys noticed Scott Anderton waiting at a bus station. They waited for him to move and lured him to a nearby canal pass. A conversation was sparked up between the four guys about drugs, and eventually Scott asked them if they had some cannabis that he could buy. The boys said yes, but explained that he would have to go with them down the canal pass since there were no cameras down that pass that could expose them. Scott agreed to follow them, but this is when all three of them became very aggressive, and unfortunately, they ended up stabbing him 35 times. As a way to hide their crime, they threw him into the water in hopes that he would drown. Scott was shockingly still alive at this point, and attempted to pull himself out of the water, but the three guys just kept on attacking him. Eventually, the damage had taken a toll on Scott Anderton, and he would die on scene. One of the guys named Liam Bailey, who was 18 at the time, and the oldest of them three, searched Scott's bag after killing him to see if he had any valuables. All of them fled the scene and made their way back to Liam's home, but they weren't just finished there. Around three hours later, they would all return back to the scene to see his body. It was during this time that the officers were investigating the dead body, as a woman happened to see him lifelessly in the canal. At the time, no one knew who had committed killings but the three guys. So as a way to brag about their murder, they recorded videos on their Snapchat story with one of them saying, It's hot in Lee Town, and another video with a caption stating, Good vibes. Local authorities were quickly able to figure out the three suspects behind this all as the CCTV footage was used to pinpoint their locations. During the trial, not only were they found all guilty of murdering Scott Anderton, but it was discovered that just hours before the killing, they attempted to rob and stab another person. Once again, they were walking around the same area in Lee Town, but they were joined along with a guy named Nation Shaw. He happened to be friends with one of the younger boys, and they were planning on just hanging out together. But Nathan became worried as it was already starting to become late, and he didn't know the two older guys. As they approached a secluded canal pass, Nathan would be stabbed twice in the back, but luckily managed to escape. This was brought up in the trial, and things became even worse for them. Now, for the longest time during the trial, it was debated whether or not the two youngest boys should have their identity revealed. Liam Bailey was the oldest being 18, but the two others were 16 and 17, in which their ages were the factors behind not revealing their identity. But because of the circumstances, both of them were revealed to the public and charged for their actions. The 16-year-old boy was confirmed to be Harry Marr, and the 17-year-old boy was named Liam O'Brien. For their crimes, Harry Marr was sentenced to life and must serve 16 years before he's eligible for parole. Liam O'Brien was ordered to serve 10 years, and Liam Bailey was given a life sentence in prison with a minimum term of 23 years and 4 months. Oliver Stevens, who is commonly referred to as Ollie, was just 13 years old when he was stabbed to death in Reading, Berkshire by a group of teen boys who recruited a girl they knew to lure him to Bugs Bottom Park, a field behind his house in January 2021. It was just a couple days before the end of Christmas break, and Ollie and his parents were preparing to go back to work and school. Ollie was planning on staying home that day until he received a message on Snapchat. He never clarified what the message said, but before leaving the house, he assured his parents that he would be home before dark. Amanda Stevens, Ollie's mother, would hear a knock on the door around 15 minutes after Ollie left, in which she was surprised that he would be back so quickly. However, when she opened the door, it wasn't Ollie. Instead, it was one of Ollie's friends, who explained to her that she had just witnessed her son being stabbed to death by a group of boys. It was reported that these two other boys were seeking revenge after Ollie snitched on them just a couple weeks prior. Ollie saw a picture of a younger boy posted on Snapchat being humiliated and bullied. Once he saw the story, he saw the two boys that were bullying him, and so he alerted the boys' older brothers by sending them the Snap story. The boys were confronted by the brothers and wondered who had snitched on them. When they figured out it was Ollie, they planned to seek revenge on him, but they just didn't know how they were going to do it. 
Out of nowhere, they got into contact with a 13-year-old girl who actually happened to know Ali. The girl was actually Ali's girlfriend at the time, but their relationship wasn't necessarily the greatest. A couple weeks before the murder, Ali got into an argument with her as he believed she was sending inappropriate photos of herself to other guys. This of course led some drama into the relationship, which eventually led onto social media. The girl posted a Snapchat story basically explaining the situation and that she would pay anyone £154.94 to help set him up to get stabbed or robbed. She clarified that she didn't want him to get killed and to just stab him in the hand or something so that he would learn his lesson. It was later revealed that both boys were sending numerous voice notes and messages to the 13-year-old girl discussing and planning what they were going to do with him. Police reports have revealed some of the voice notes, including them saying, You're going to die tomorrow, Ollie. And I'll just give him bangs or stab him. Even the girl was sending back voice messages and was showing eagerness as she said this. She wants me to set him up so that is going to bang him and powder him and shit. I'm so excited, you don't understand. A majority of the evidence was from Snapchat and the two boys and girls were found guilty for their crimes. The girl was eventually convicted of manslaughter and was sentenced to 3 years and 2 months detention to a youth offender institution. But this was later increased to 5 years. The 13 year old boy who initiated the attack with the knife received a minimum of 13 years in prison while the other 14 year old child received a minimum of 12 years. If you made it to this point of the video, I just want to thank you so much for staying and watching. It truly means a lot to me. Alright, so it's actually been a while since I've dedicated a full video to true crime. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm always trying to mix things up, you know. Not often do I like to just stick to one topic and it just keeps things interesting and hopefully you guys enjoy it. But yeah, I'm going to keep this outro short. As always, I hope you guys are doing well. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. I will read it and reply to it as I do to basically every comment and yeah. But yeah, I'm always going to keep reminding you guys. You guys have been showing so much support lately and just thank you for watching. Seriously, I'm almost at 70,000 subs and, and I'm still in disbelief. You guys seriously have done so much for me. I'm going to end it off now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you watching, yes you, have a great rest of your day. But before you leave, don't leave yet. I just want to let you know that I truly mean that. I truly hope you, yes you, the person watching, have a great rest of your day. Alright, I'm going to go now, but I'll see you guys next time. See you guys.